my name is Dr. Maria Haji Michael, a clinical psychologist at Great Ormond Street Hospital, and I work in the specialist Tier 4 CAM service for children with Tourette's syndrome. In this video, I'll define what anger difficulties are in Tourette's syndrome, and importantly, help parents and school think about how to support a young person with these difficulties. Before I start, I want to let you know that here at Great Ormond Street Hospital, we see many children every year with Tourette's syndrome, and a proportion of these patients we see also display symptoms such as aggression, explosive behaviour, outbursts and tantrums. This is often the thing that parents and schools find the most difficult to manage, sometimes more so than the tics themselves. Anger is a very powerful symptom. For example, a seven-year-old uh, with Tourette's syndrome and tantrums every day is likely to have real difficulties in family and school life, and those helping them will also be challenged. It may also lead to peer and sibling problems. Anger is a common symptom in children with Tourette's syndrome. The research shows that about 40% of children with Tourette's may also experience difficulties with anger. Research has also shown that the risk of having these difficulties increases with the more co-occurring difficulties that a child has. For example, a children who have OCD or ADHD, in addition to their Tourette's, are particularly vulnerable to anger difficulties. There is often some misunderstanding among parents that these are tics in themselves. And sometimes these difficulties are referred to as rage tics. However, these symptoms are not tics. Parents often think that if a child cannot control their, their tics, then this may also mean that they are unable to control their angry behaviour too. Parents may relax their behavioural strategies or give in to the requests of their child, and this only in turn serves to make anger a bigger problem. With these simple steps, you could make a big difference to the way that anger is understood and expressed. Tip 1. Ask yourself, does my child have additional difficulties? It can often be helpful to play a bit of a detective and try to understand, does the child also have additional difficulties which may be leading the child to feel frustrated? Common issues include learning difficulties, family factors, neurodevelopmental difficulties such as ADHD and autism, and even certain medicines can lead to anger symptoms. Set up a functional analysis to understand what are the situations in which the behaviour is most likely to occur. Angry behaviours do not generally happen out of the blue, and therefore it's helpful to understand what specific circumstances lead to an outburst. What was happening just before the anger? Where were they? What time of day was it? Is it that the child was trying to avoid doing something? Is it that the child wants something? Was the child trying to escape something? Or is the behaviour happening during a time of transition from one activity to the other? There is usually a function behind the behaviour. The second part of this is to understand what is the consequence of the behaviour. For example, a child who's finding maths difficult and the consequence of their tantrum is that they are removed from the classroom, then the tantrum becomes very reinforcing. The consequence of the tantrum therefore achieves exactly what they're looking for. Learning theory can teach us a lot and it is useful when thinking about how to manage anger and Tourette's syndrome. Once you are aware of additional difficulties, for example ADHD, make sure that appropriate support and expectations are in place. If your child is put in a situation which outstrips their skills, without help, then anger is a very understandable response. Tip 2. Normalise anger as an emotion and help the child to recognise physical symptoms. We do not want to discourage the child from saying that they're angry, but we do want to teach them that hitting out or hitting things or hitting others is not the best way to communicate their upset. For young children, it is often helpful to ask them to begin to notice changes in their body when they're becoming angry, such as clenched fists or their body suddenly becoming hot. Tip 3. Ask the child, when calm, how they would like other people to respond when they're getting frustrated. Often when a child is having a tantrum, people start to get more and more involved and hands-on with the child, when in fact this may further increase the anger. By asking the child what they can do to calm themselves down and what strategies they would like other people to try will help the young person to understand that anger is within their control and that people around them care about their happiness. It can also be helpful to ask the child what word they would like to use when they're starting to get wound up what they look like when they feel like this, and what other people would start to notice when they're starting to feel this way. You can start to develop a list of things the child can do, and a list of what things the child thinks other people can do to help them calm down. Tip four, skill up on consistent parenting approaches. We often hear from parents, we have tried everything. 
but we know that if you can apply consistent parenting approaches by both parents, this will lead to change. We all learn through positive and negative consequences. For example, if we've been working hard at work and we get a bonus, we'll be incentivized and motivated to work hard in the future. In the same way, if you're speeding your car and you get a speeding ticket, you're more likely next time to modify your behavior so as to avoid a negative consequence. Therefore, it's helpful to introduce rewards and reinforce the child's effort to control their aggressive behavior, but also have clear and consistent rules that breaking things, hurting oneself and hurting others will be associated with clear consequences. It is through rewards and punishments that children learn to control their emotions and therefore modify their behavior. Of course, rewards and sanctions only work for things the child is capable of. So make sure you've got your expectations right. It's okay to stretch your child's skills, but do it gradually. Tip five, share helpful strategies and create a behavior support plan. It is helpful to create a behaviour support plan that is followed by everyone who comes into contact with the young person. The emphasis needs to be on prevention. That includes knowing the child's limits and supporting them in all situations appropriately, as well as helping the child to notice when they're starting to look upset. There does, however, need to be a clear plan for the times when the child isn't able to control their anger. Remember that you can speak to your GP, school or to your local CAMS team if your child is still experiencing difficulties with anger.